everyone. Happy Thursday. How's it going? Going good, my man. How about yourself, brother? I'm doing all right. And, you know, I hope everyone who's uh, listening in today, their day was decent as well. You know, I mean, it might have been a little uh, gray and dreary and cold outside, but, you know, we're alive. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it was. It was pouring its ass off the last two days here. And uh, thankfully, we had a little break of sunshine. I got to go outside. Oh, that's what blue looks like. Cool. And that rained. <laughs> I don't think I've seen yeah. the sun in like four days at this point. Oh, it'll come back eventually. It's there, I promise. We just, just got to wait for it to get here. Kind of like uh, seeing profits on a lot of these things. And we're going to get at that in a second. But first of all, I want to say hey to everybody in the audience. So, Rosalind, how you doing, my dear? Yes, let's go. And Wild Angel, hello, Wild Angel. How you doing, love? She's out running around. And ya bunks, my man. How you doing, brother? So, uh, as you guys all know, real quick shout out to ya bunks from Karma Farm Sanctuary. Make sure to check him out. He is a great supporter and a great friend. So, love him to death. Great to have you here with us, buddy. And uh, Ashley, how you doing, Ashley? Welcome to the show. So, Cyro, I have got some celebration news to start the day off with. And I'm sure you guys oh. have already heard about it. But it's something that... Yo, know, even though I wasn't directly affected, I think it was a good call. And that was our beloved leader, Mr. Sam Bankman Fried, received 25 years in prison. And what is it? He has to return $11 billion. <laughs> I was so expecting for him to be able to skate out with a slap on the wrist because of his family and all those connections. I'm glad he got slammed. I am too. I mean, they had clearly structured their business so that they could use the the defense of it wasn't intentional defrauding, right? So they were, you know, that's the defense that they were going for. You know, the whole oh, we didn't know. Uh, you know, the whole ignorance to show that there was no intentional defrauding, yada yada yada. So I'm right, glad right. that they got nailed to the wall. Um, but being that they are court ordered to repay back that 11 billion, uh, I would say RIP to any particular thing that uh, FTX had a lot in holdings of assault. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, yeah, and that's one that it's going to do it. And, you know, we've talked about this in many different episodes that, you know, Solana is one of the big holdings they had, something we have to watch out for. This can have a huge impact. So even though it's a good thing justice came about, it can have a huge impact on your holdings and your belongings. So that's why we stress you guys keep an eye on what's going on in the market, because something like this can absolutely wreck your bag if you're holding just one of those assets that they have a whole ton of that they have to liquidate. So be smart when you're investing. Yep. And as of December, uh, their holdings were worth a little over $4 billion. And I believe in December, Sol was sitting at what, like around 100 bucks, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I think it was a little less in December still. You think? I'd have to go look. Mm, now I'm yeah, I didn't curious. Think it started, I didn't think it started pumping until January. So yeah, let's find out there. So uh, absolutely, brother. Always happy to give you a, a shout out there, Alex. And you know, I love what you're doing with the animals. And guys, uh, Alex runs Karma Farm Sanctuary. If you guys haven't seen it or heard it, he's on right before Freaky Friday on YouTube. Uh, so we just go back to back to back. So yo, plan your far party at Bleh, Friday accordingly for a party because you got Alex to start the party off and right here to finish it up with a whole gang. And tomorrow's going to be pretty interesting. So make sure to tune in tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, where uh, Freaky Friday goes live. And truth is, we don't know what we're going to talk about, but we always have a hell of a good time. Yes. Uh, so it looks like December 1st, Sol was around uh, 59 bucks per. Okay. Uh, but by the end of December uh it was sitting at 101 dollars per oh we so, did break it okay I, mean, I believe they did the uh the report on the 22nd of december which would place it at approximately 93 to 99 dollars worth per soul because that was uh it's open to high um closed out the day at 97 bucks so if that's the case that was four billion Back when it was almost a hundred dollars cheaper per token, so that would put them at that eight billion plus range, which would get them really, really close to wrapping up their um, paying back that eleven billion. Exactly, and so yeah, guys, uh, be aware, be aware how this is going down because I mean things are going on in the market, and I mean now we're seeing that uh, Coinbase is getting sued again. 
Um, I mean, it's it's just ongoing. And then at the same time, you hear about the uh, XRPs trying to do the CBDCs and all that. Nobody knows what's going on. It's absolute chaos out there. It's anarchy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And um, we're going to dive a little bit into the anarchy uh, yes. of the DeFi space today because we got a really good question that came in. Um, we we had touched briefly last episode on, well, a little more than briefly, about pulling <laughs> back the curtain on some of the behind the scenes stuff in DeFi. And we had received a question from a user, um, a community member in our Discord, that basically asked, uh, in a nutshell, how do concentrated liquidity VE33 DEXs work? Which is... That's, that's a great question, because I'm not even totally sure I understand. I'm like, I think I, I got enough to where I know what to do and not to do, but not to really understand it. So I think that's great. And guys, if you ever want to know something, seriously, there's the link to the Down Home Crypto Discord. Hop in there, you can ask your questions, and you never know. Your questions might end up the main topic right here on Rags to Riches. Because that's what's happening tonight. I saw that question, and I was like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> uh, let's do it. So we're going to be diving into that tonight, and we're going to learn how that works. Perfect. So I got my pen and paper. I am ready. Oh, let's he's go. ready to take notes. <laughs> so there's... <laughs> There's been a lot of tweaks to the VE33 model that the platform own really helped popularize. Uh, Solidly um, was another protocol that made some tweaks to it, changed the way it works a little bit. Some additional tokenomics got added because what a lot of people ran into with the birth of Ohm essentially is that it only works if everyone's doing it, right? right. And what they saw happening was, well, first, let's put a pin in that. Okay. Let's put a pin in that. Let's go back to the beginning of what is a concentrated liquidity VE33 DEX. Right. So the way that typical decentralized exchanges work is kind of similar to when you're trading on just one, uh, one token, right? You know, you make the purchase, it interacts with the liquidity pool, does that swap there you put in matic you get out token or you put in eth you get out token and that's the way it works right, right. we've talked about that quite a bit uh <laughs> over the last 45 weeks so check out some previous episodes um but concentrated liquidity we've talked about what that is too concentrated liquidity is a decentralized exchange that takes a v, uh, the V3 L LP pools where you can concentrate the price ranges that your liquidity is going to be tradable in, right? Again, touched on that in the previous episode. If you're not sure about the fundamentals, go back and check it out. Um, and users supply liquidity to these different pairs, whether it's WBTC and WETH, or whether it's uh, USDC and USDT. It can be a stable pool or a volatile pool right? Two volatile assets or paired to a stable asset, etc. cetera. Right. Um, users supply liquidity and they earn rewards. Often these rewards are rather high APYs, like hundred something percent APY. But in the beginning, these VE33 DEXs, they would give out the reward in their native DEX token. So you would see the price, you know, it started would go up and up and up like after they launched and then it would just pretty much at a very steady angle do nothing but go down for infinity. <laughs> um, I mean, look at Ohm's price. Uh, I hear they've been doing things lately. I'm not sure. I kind of stopped paying attention when they stopped becoming relevant. Um, <laughs> Same here. Yeah, I still get an NFT from them, I think. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, you probably had an LP position over there then, because that, that's the other thing. Usually, if you're providing V2 liquidity, you get an LP token. With V3 liquidity, it has an NFT that contains all the data about the weights and the shift and the ranges and blah, 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 blah. And then that's essentially your receipt uh, for your assets within the liquidity pool. So to prevent the issue that a lot of the early concentrated liquidity DEXs ran into, or the 
Well, correction, concentrated liquidity didn't come until later as a fix, but initially they were all V2 and users would provide liquidity. They would earn the rewards, very high APY. And the idea is they would take those rewards, lock them up as an NFT called a VE token, right? And so if it's a platform like uh, if Ohm was using those mechanics, uh, they would be a VE Ohm. And that's those are typically time locked for two years. So you earn your rewards and then you time lock it for two years. But then that NFT gives you vote voting weight depending on how much tokens are locked up in it. Right. right. This vote weight is what determines um, how rewards are going to be distributed. Let me explain. All of these different LP pools that users are providing liquidity to and earning rewards on, what they're doing is um, when you have the VE NFT, you vote for those different gauges. Um, they're called gauges. It's the same thing as liquidity pools, essentially. Okay. Um, so you vote for them to receive bribes and rewards. Right, which you only really care about um, those pools receiving their bribes and rewards if you're um, planning on providing liquidity to earn more of the tokens. To it's a whole loop around, right? A circle of life. Got it. <laughs> right. The only way to actually earn money is if you have the VE NFTs. You get part. You get paid essentially from fifty percent of the fees that all the liquidity that users provided generates okay okay so let's take it from the top down okay user provides liquidity user is paid out in an o token so in this case it would be o ohm right if ohm was using this model some of the more popular ones are like ramses thena uh retro uh those ve three three concentrated liquidity dexes uh, so in this case, user provides liquidity, they receive O retro, O whatever as their reward. Now it has a value, but you can't take it and sell it. It is the option. Uh, it's like a call option. If you're familiar with the way call options work, you have the option to buy this number of tokens at a discount over regular price. Okay. So you're not actually receiving anything that you can do anything with other than pay 90% of what it's valued at to convert it from this O token to regular token to then sell it onto the market to make that 10% of what you actually earned. Right? Okay. Or the actual revenue fees that your liquidity you provided goes, not to you, it goes to the protocol, right? So, right. Oh, it gets better. Huh? So, <laughs> it gets better. The, I love that. <laughs> yeah. The fees that you were supposed to be earning for providing the liquidity goes to the protocol. They take 50% of it and put it as gauge pool voting rewards so that the O token that you earn, that you pay money to convert into the regular token or that's if you want to sell it or for no cost, you can lock it for two years to get voting weight. Why do you care about voting weight? Because that's the only way to earn from the actual 50% of the rewards that they're going to pay out to the people who are voting to incentivize users to put liquidity in. Because the more that a pool is voted for, the more O token rewards it gets. So in a nutshell, the users providing liquidity do not make any money unless they lock it in for VE NFTs for two years and then use it to vote for the pools that they're providing the liquidity for so that they can earn from 50% of the fees that's paid out to the people voting um, and whatever bribes are also associated with that pool. If you're not confused yet, I would be surprised. Uh, <laughs> I need some aspirin. Somebody get, let me get some ibuprofen. Come on, help me out here. <laughs>
you remember me saying early on, the more complicated an ecosystem is, the more likely it is that they are skimming in a nutshell, right? Because the way that staff of these VE33 concentrated liquidity DEXs earn their salaries is they get essentially uh, free VE NFTs, right? They get an allocation of the very final stage, the VE NFTs that you can use to vote to earn money, right? So if they don't remember to vote every week, they don't make anything, but they're also getting paying their staff from the 50% of the rewards that they're giving to users. Gotcha. Okay. So what's left for you? Very little by the sounds of it. And you, you know, what's kind of funny, sir, because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there going to say, no, that, that can't be right. And they're going to start digging into this and you know what? I encourage it. Absolutely. Start digging into this, verify everything. We tell you everything, you know, we share with you. And if you find something different, something that doesn't run by this model, where they're feeding off the top, let us know, uh, you know, in the, uh, discord, we've got the discuss the vote channel. We've got the general, let's talk about it. Let's learn about it. Cause I would love to hear more. And, uh, like funny Turo says here, he's been loving extra finance farms. Now I have no idea who that is, but funny, I will definitely be checking it out. Yeah. Um, so the 50% that's based off of one of the DEXs I'm aware of, right? There are some VE33 DEXs out there in the concentrated liquidity, um, uh, space that give more than that back to users, which is awesome. Uh, if you can find one that's giving anywhere close to like 80% of rewards back to the VE NFT voters, that's an awesome DEX. You know, like I'd probably farm there too, because 20% to let them automate it, automate, manage it. That's great. Right. Um, the reason why these VE33 DEXs are attractive to a lot of users is because the users either don't know how or don't want to, um, manage their own ve or i mean v bleh a lot of v's uh v3 liquidity position on like uniswap right they don't want to have to sit there and try to rebalance and keep their liquidity in just the right range to earn the most that they can so they'll use these amms these automated money makers right or right. automated money management systems money, yeah, money management, yeah. <laughs> um so it's sure like an EMM have... fighter or something. Else. <laughs> not sure where I got like, uh, oh, I combined automated uh, market makers with the automated money management systems. <laughs> there you go. That works. <laughs> That's what happens when TradFi has the exact same uh, acronym as DeFi, but they mean two different things. Uh, you wind up combining them in your head sometimes. That's uh, I know that there's uh, there are some VE33 concentrated liquidity DEXs, because that's a mouthful, um, that are going to be launching soonish that give much better rate skews. But the example that I picked uh, out of the air there, I know um, a couple months ago, the platform Ramsey's had about 10 million in TVL. They used a 50% metric, right? Um, so they were earning approximately 120 to 170,000 a week in revenue off that 10 million in TVL, which was supplied by the users, right? Then they would take 50% of that. So anywhere from 50,000 to 70,000 or, or 80,000, whatever that 50% was, and deposit it as rewards that the VE NFT voters could receive, right? Okay. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting seeing the space really experimenting with a lot of variations of this model. It seems to be popular. People really do tend to like the automated nature of it. Uh, they basically have to check in once a week, uh, every Wednesday before the, the epoch ends. And, and after that, um, everything else is just pretty much passive. Right. Uh, right. so it, it does have a lot of popularity for that. Um, but really make sure you know um what those percentages are like how much of the how much of the fees is being paid back out what's that rate look like don't get suckered in 
by seeing like 183% APY, but then when you mouse over it or whatever, you see that it's paid out in O token, right? Because you're really not getting that much. You're getting like, realistically, if you run the math, maybe 10% of that. Because you're still have, if you want to sell it, you still have to pay 90% of its worth in whatever it's paired to, to convert it to the real token. So you get a 10% discount and then you get to sell it. But depending on liquidity depth of its token, you might cause a price impact of more than a couple of percent, right? If you're selling right. your, your earnings. So there's just a lot at play that you really need to be aware of before you go and just deposit your money into these AMMs. There is. And uh, yeah, it's like Jason uh, saying here, it seems like rebalancing has been costing a lot of gas in the market. I don't like that you do like the uh, auto farms. And yeah, gas prices have gone up. In fact, I just read about the, uh, the new blobs where they're having problems with that. And I forget what part it was, but they're going to have to start limiting or raising the price to do certain actions, even with the brand new Denkun that we just talked about. It, it's crazy. Um, and it's not going to get any better, guys. So doing your research before you just buy into something because it has great APY or because Bob said so. Remember, that is never a wise idea. You've got to understand it. And if you don't understand it, hey, bring it to the Discord. Let's talk about it. Or we'll say, man, back away, run, turn. Go the other way. Not good. <laughs> yeah, and and to add to that, it, it's eh, I'm trying to think of, of, of a good way to phrase it um, without like accidentally pissing anybody off. Oh, this could be bad. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> no, nah, nah, I don't think it'll be bad. Um, but when you see a network go from not really getting a lot of attention to suddenly becoming super popular. Um, if it's already hit that it suddenly becomes super popular, stay out of it. Uh, right. There's a lot of people who bought into this new network called Blast, right? Um, and it was supposed to solve all these different issues, be better at gas, blah, 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 super hyped. And they all bridged a bunch of money over and now trying to do transactions it's like 600 bucks in gas right yeah it's so crazy uh, yeah yeah that's one of my uh one of the airdrops i was actually farming because like oh okay well i can just do this with a tweet here to share this and hey, no big deal and i could do it on the uh, spolia testnet did a bunch of transactions there for it okay haven't seen a dime out of it and you know, I'm seeing and hearing a lot of these things like that, like airdrops. They say, hey, we'll go ahead and do this test net, run through all these things, and then we're going to give you 5% of the total token supply. Well, over the last two weeks, I think we've had three projects all say, oh, well, we're going to do a second round of airdrops. So we're just going to roll those points to the next one. And yeah, things are already getting shady out there. The promise is not being kept. Uh, what we thought was going to happen isn't what's really happening. So guys, you got to be careful no matter what you're investing in. Even if it's something as farming airdrops, scammers are running rampant and they're going to suck you for every little bit they can. Whether it's your time, your energy, or your money, they're going to try and get you. So be careful. Be diligent. And something that I strongly, strongly recommend is understand what defines something as a security, right? Here's why. I had someone recommend something to me the other day. Um, I'm going to leave the name out of it, but basically the protocol, they received a lot of VC investments, uh, a lot of big money, all this kind of stuff, um, seemed to be really hype. They've been in development for about two years now. Um, and the premise of it is real world asset. What kind of real world asset? Real estate. And it's basically meant to create a derivatives market around real estate and different parcels of property, right? Problem with that is the amount of regulation surrounding that sort of thing is intense. Yeah. Understand what is classified as a security, what the definition is, and hold up that as a measuring stick to something that is like oh this is what we're doing this is what we're building this is what we're working towards if it is something that has to do with the real world right 
such as real estate parcels and, and property and derivatives markets, etc. Um, ask yourself, do they have the necessary licenses? Do they have the proper registrations? Are they performing KYC on every single person who is buying into this? If not, they're certainly not filing the correct forms with the SEC, and this is likely going to end very badly, right? Ask yourself those questions. It's part of the due diligence. Exactly. And, you know, going along with that is what is the security? Man, we can't even get our government to figure out what it is. And so, you know, you guys have to look ahead because as we talked about, this next bull market is going to be a completely new animal, new regulations, new corporate structures. Everything is going to change and make no mistake. The last bull market, you know, DeFi could kind of fly under the radar. Nobody really cared what happened in the Wild West. We could shoot each other in the street. Nobody gave a shit. This bull market, make no mistake, big corporations and SEC and regulation are keeping an eye on it and they are monitoring what we're doing. So there, it wouldn't surprise me a bit a year from now if half these DeFi projects pop up, the SEC walks in and says, guess what? You're security. You're all screwed. <laughs> it could happen. They've done that to several protocols, quite a few protocols. Block.fi as a great example. Um, they went in and hit them with the nice fine. The, uh, that's when they give you a fine that they expect that you'll be able to pay. And so they're not trying to put you out of business. They just want to get their what's theirs, right? right. Or what they okay. think is theirs. Um, and BlockFi had to pay $22 million. <laughs> that's the nice fine? Holy shit. <laughs> that's the nice fine. They could have charged them over 120 Guess where all that money comes from? That's right. Your holdings within that protocol. <laughs> <laughs> yup. You had a delay there. Did I lose you? <laughs> uh, no, sorry. I, I had a situation. Um, oh, okay. Everything okay? Yeah. No, everything's okay. good. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Guys, be especially careful. When you go into these, you know, watch the percentages. Read through the white papers. Understand them. And what if you ever have questions... Yo, it's not going to be showing if you jump the Discord and say, hey, I'm trying to check this out. And I don't get it. What the hell does this mean? Yo, that's not showing that's nothing like that. Let's chat about it. Um, if you do think a project is great and you want to promote it, throw it in the Discuss the Vote channel. You can put all your links, all your referrals, whatever you want in there. I don't care. Shill away. Um, if it's something you believe in, because that way people can come to you and say, hey, what do you know about this? I read through it and I don't quite get it. They know to reach out to you as a member of Down Home uh, Crypto and ask questions because not everybody has the same experience level on reading white paper or understanding tokenomics. They're like, I don't get it. Well, if you put it out there, they're going to come to you. And hopefully as a community, we can all win together. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's, that's the other thing. It, it's, um, as stated, uh, we're taking this show into the more advanced, right? So if uh, there's something more advanced that you do want to know and that you have questions on, post a question in the Discord and we will go through and we'll pick one each week to answer. Um, so I look forward to seeing what you guys want to know more about because the point here of this show is to grow it, is to take you further in your education journey. And so I want to know, what do you want to know? I was trying to think of something really sarcastic and I couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> it's like, hmm, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, what I want to know and what you can tell me uh, is what, um, how many votes did we get? Like, like who's doing in the dance off? Because I know that it is time to dance for my bees. It is time to dance, dance, dance for your bees. Good advice heard, which main motion you act on is greed, FOMO, pride, etc. Yes. And BTK says, tell us about the interferometer arms, George. <laughs> We're not going down that. That's tomorrow night. That That's on Freaky Friday. We will absolutely be diving down that rabbit hole. I have no doubt tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern on Freaky Friday. So make sure to tune in if you want to know what we're talking about, about the interferometer. Those. <laughs> Anywho. Anyway, so uh, the great thing here, guys, is we had more voters than normal, which is Ooh. awesome because we have a slide bar. And Ooh, let me share my screen here. Bar? 
We have a scroll, scroll bar. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a challenging day. <laughs> it really has. <laughs> OK, I'm sure audio. OK, and also share system audio. And you're going to hear an echo here, Cyril. So I do apologize. We know this well, how, how means, this works. That means that I stop talking. Talk. OK, fair enough. So, yes, we had 28 voters this week, guys. And uh, as you can see, as always, I am right in the middle there. So if I come up, I add $10 to the pot and we go again. Now, if you guys haven't seen this before, I'm really surprised. And if you didn't vote again, really, voting polls are open every Thursday morning. And yes, I'm talking to one person specifically, and you know who it is. <laughs> oh, got called out. Woo! So I, uh, the voting polls open every Thursday morning, and they run until Wednesday night at midnight, Mount Standard Time. That gives you guys plenty of time to jump in there and cast your votes. Now, if you're adding, you can add whatever you want into either one of the lists. You've got DeFi and you've got blue chips. You can add to both of them. Just do me a huge favor is if you do put something in there or add a, something to vote for, jump over into the Discuss the Vote channel and put the information. Why do you believe in it? What are the links to it? Where's the white paper? What's, you know, whatever you've got, throw it in there. Let's all learn about it. And that's what's going to make this great. Because sometimes we get things pop up there on the DeFi votes. I'm like, seriously, I don't even know what that is. And I go and discuss the vote and there's nothing like, How's anybody supposed to know what to vote for if they can't find the link or the information? So definitely spread the word. I think he's being sarcastic because I can't hear a thing you're saying, Cyril. Oh, oh, that works. Okay, I thought you were kidding around, man. <laughs> yes, he, he was making faces and noise. It was like, hmm, OK, I don't know if he broke it. OK, so as you guys know, if you win the dance off, all you have to do is shoot me a DM in Discord in the next 24 hours, and I'll make sure you get your winnings by the end of the weekend. It's not going to get rushed out to you right away because we always have things to go. But shoot me a DM if you are the winner. And let's do this in five, four, three, two, one. Wiggle, grab fish, wiggle. We got too many to dance, so we got to wiggle for wiggle for your win. There you go. Do, 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 do. Oh. I was like, wait, okay. Am I still in there? Am I in there? So I see a mommy. I see Dusty Jabs. Alpha Cruz. Uh, Royals over there. Ow. There's BTK. Oh, man, I'm going to pop. I'm going to pop. I popped. Okay. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, BTK, you're still out there. Oh, Hope Giver's going to blow. Look out. Look out. She goes. Ooh, Dusty. Dusty's got the zoomies. I love seeing critters with zoomies. Oh, Cheetos dodged a bullet. Nice job. Come on, Amu. Get moving, man. You're, you're just sitting there. Oh, there he goes. Now he's zooming. Oh, now Amu is just lost and confused. Goes spinning around and around and around. And... Oh, I missed who that was. I'll go. Oh, man, Cheetos, you're like this far every time. Oh, sorry. He dodged like six of them. Danfo! Congratulations, Danfo Peter! Well done, sir! Congratulations. Congrats, Danfo. So you know the game. Shoot me a DM in Discord and send me over your wallet address. Now you don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes I send ABAC, sometimes USDC. One of these days I'm going to start sending Cure Crew Fund tokens out just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I, I very well could. There you but, go. Uh, yeah. So, Cyro, the week has been weird. This day's been odd. Markets are up, they're down, they're back and forth, the news. I'm not even sure I want to know how we're doing so far in our portfolio, but lay it on me. Where do we stand, brother? Well, let me go ahead and share that screen. Everyone says, congrats, Dan Foe! Way to go, buddy! That's the wrong one. Yeah, I thought Cheetos had it, man. He dodged like five blades in a row. They just skimmed right past him. Like, oh. man, he's he's just dodging bullets left and right, doing the whole Matrix thing. His little worm's like, Wah! yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I thought for sure he was going to survive that third and final dodge there, but nope. So <laughs> um, our week, we started out, as you remember, last week was a little, or the week before last was a little rough. Uh, so we started <laughs> off down uh, with $1,459.45, and then 
um, we ended the week with $1,506.10 for a gain of $46.65 or 3.1%. We chuck in our 25 bucks, which will start us this week off with $1,531.10. Our portfolio is up a nice round 33.3% overall. Um, and you can see nice. we had that little dip there, but we're recovering and eventually our portfolio, uh, our little bar chart here is really going to start resembling like a chart. Uh, if I don't <laughs> clear out this data again, but what I can do at the end of the year is I would love to go through, take all of these amounts here and the C column and plot them out on a little plot graph and overlay it with the market as a whole and see how we performed comparatively. Right. Yeah, let's go back into back test and basically analyze, okay, were we doing better than the market was or were we doing behind? And maybe that helped guide us into the next uh, year of evolution. Exactly. Because if you're not looking at the data, you don't know how you did right it's we had this conversation before it would be like a business not tracking inventory if you don't write down journal your trades track your info like know what you're buying at what price what price are you selling it at and like you don't open a business selling something um know that you paid say maybe like five bucks for this item and then sit there and not know what you're going to sell it for would you do that? Would you go there and be like, uh, I'll sell it when someone offers me a price that seems decent? <laughs> or would you be like, no, this is what I need to make for this trade. This is the profit that I'm expecting for the risk that I'm taking, right? Like I'm purchasing this item with the hope that I'm going to be able to sell it. I'm going to have to sit on it. It's going to take up space. It's going to take energy to clean it. You know, I got to keep the lights on. Uh, you know, so how much do I need to sell this item for? If you're not doing that with your trades, what are you doing? You're not taking the steps towards success. That's, that's for sure. Um, it is a business treated as such. Exactly. And we've talked about that time and time again. And yeah, if, if your money is just sitting there, if you're not working it correctly, it's like an employee costing you money, yeah, get rid of them. And so you've got to know that information to understand if that employee is costing you money or not. And until you analyze it, you'll never know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, that's why we track. That's why we track. That's why we jot it down. That's why we have all of that here in our spreadsheet. Now, remember, guys, if you want to copy that spreadsheet, it is posted in Down Home Crypto Discord, and you can go in and change the fields to your own. And it's already built for you. So it makes it really, really simple. There's kind of no excuse not to. Except unless you just don't care and you're really lazy. He's like, nah, I don't care. I'm just gambling. I'm having fun. Well, you know what? That's okay. Everybody has their own mindset. And if you want to gamble, great. More power to you. But statistically, you're probably going to lose. So why not put just a little bit of effort towards it and you know set it up for a win? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And Toro is correct. Opportunity cost is very important. Uh, you know, because if you're sitting on something that isn't selling right in your shop eventually you want to have room to put items that are selling out there right so it taking up space is also costing you money you know it's like having that um that dollar just sitting in your savings account not working not growing there's that missed opportunity cost as well and missed opportunity is often what tends to get a lot of people in the crypto space because one of the hardest things for them to do is hit that sell button right or to take profit or to swap it out to stable coin because like oh well stable coin doesn't move okay well at least swap it out to uh blue chips then exactly and you know that brings up a great question so in our portfolio i know we have a few holdings that are kind of stagnant they really haven't gotten down so they haven't broke the 50 percent rule but they really haven't gained to match what the market is doing so what do you think we should do on that i'd love to hear your comments uh, in the chat there guys should we start looking at reevaluating our portfolio or should we let it ride? What do you guys think? What do you think, Sorrow? Well, um, I'd actually been advising people in, in my Discord um, if what you're invested in 
has not at least gone up half of what it's paired to has, you need to get rid of it. If this is a, a prolonged trend, you know, everyone has a bad week, sometimes a bad month. But if this is a prolonged trend where it's not at least keeping up with half of the growth of what it's paired to, get rid of it, right? Um, I actually spent some time yesterday. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, we did. We did. We we so got. Those okay. Go ahead. I say so for those listening. Uh, Casey can't, can't say that. Uh, funny to us. Did we sell the BNB as you had mentioned a couple weeks ago? Because we did have that discussion of should we sell that? And so, mm. sorry, did we and what did we do with it? Yeah. So we did. Uh, we converted it to. One second. Let me look. This is why we write it down, right? Uh, That's right, because I can't remember my own name most days. <laughs> yeah, so we sold half of our BNB. Uh, we did it in 25% increments because what I had asked you guys to do uh, was if you were down with selling 50% of our BNB, once I hit 500, hit yes in the Discord, which a lot of you did. Thank you. Um, but again, we DCA in, so we also DCA out, right? So our first sell uh, was at 518. Our second sell was at like 528, I think. No. Uh, where was it? I wrote it down. Let me real quick check. Yeah, I don't, you got I don't the books, to, man. I don't want to answer wrong. Um, <laughs> okay, here it is. Yeah, I had it marked on the chart. So the first, the first one was at 518 the second one was at 589 um and then it came back down since then and then went back up to 584. uh we retained 50 percent of the bnb that we did have in our portfolio and the rest of it was converted to usdc um with the uh, so we we took profit on two hundred and thirty one dollars, I think, um, nice. and now that's sitting there is USDC. And what we're doing is we're looking for any kind of like black swan event. So we're keeping that as cash on the side because we don't want to do a large purchase of like a blue chip up here at this price, right? So exactly, and. Uh... So, I mean, with this new uh, Coinbase thing, um, do you think that's going to that between that, the FTX and all that, are you looking for another Black Swan event or some serious pullback of drama that's going to happen in the next, say, 90 days? Um, I mean, every economic signal out there is flashing warning, warning, warning. Um, you know, every indicator out there for the global macroeconomic situation is just screaming that, you know, we're standing on a ledge or we've already started and they're just not admitting it. Um, <laughs> so it, it's very, it's very tough. We're, we are in incredibly unprecedented times. Um, right. While we hope we don't have a black swan event, it's still you would i would be remiss if i didn't prepare us for it right so we already took profits on our bnb we we got our initial out plus 25 percent profit essentially because it 2x right we started buying bnb when it was at 240. so by selling 50 percent we uh we 2xed our money there we were able to chuck it over there on usdc and we still have the same amount that we put in as BNB in case it goes up higher. Great, that's what you want, right? Um, but our USDC, because our cost average is so much lower than it sits currently, it's not smart to take money that you just took as profit and put it all in uh, near the local top. Right, like this is the highest the market's ever been in regards to Bitcoin's price. You know, this is not the place that you want to be dropping. You know, a decent chunk of what you just took as profit in. Right, even though it's a blue chip, and 
more than likely it's going to go up in the next year to two years. But uh, at the same time, it's one of those, I know people like myself, I have problems just letting it sit there. It's like, yeah, but I, yeah, I could do this or I could do that or I could do that. And so, you know, that's one of the hardest things is practicing that strategic investing. And it, that doesn't mean close your eyes and throw it. It's like, yeah, it's going to go up. And, like, and then it dips. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> Sometimes that means keeping cash on the side, right? right. When you know that it's rough out there, right? You know, in the world. And you know that we do stand a decent likelihood of having something happen that causes or precipitates a black swan event. It makes sense to have some cash on the side because, you know, a black swan event, it's going to recover, right? It presents a very brief, but very attractive buying opportunity. That's why they tend to recover so fast, right? Um, so having some cash on the side so you can capitalize on that is part of that patience and discipline. Right. And, uh, you know, what I want to point out. So if you guys aren't familiar with Black Swan events or something and you want a great example and Cyril, I know you absolutely capitalize the hell out of this one, which is when the whole USDC and the circle thing all occurred and that the price of a stable coin dropped to what was it? 87 cents. Uh, yeah, 83? I think it came down to a low of like. 87 cents for usdc right. it's a stable you know what's going to go back up i mean plain and simple it was a stupid little thing wow. this media turned into an explosive thing so just because it's a stable doesn't mean you know it's going to go back up if it right depends, right we've had in, in that circumstance uh which is why it's important to understand what does the books of the stable coin that you're choosing to hold your money in look like you know, uh, have they had regular audits of their holdings? Are they backed by fiat? Are they backed by corporate paper, which is really just debt? What are they backed by? And because Circle's USDC, um, they have a very healthy backing. When everyone started flipping out because they lost the money that they lost during Silicon Valley banks, uh, Silicon valley banks uh <laughs> crash or it's a hard uh <laughs> people started panicking right. but if you looked at the books it would be as if you had a thousand dollars in your pocket and you accidentally lost three of them would you flip out would you panic no it was three bucks right, right. so when you look at that on a comparative scale to their book balance the funds that they lost access to it was very obvious that this was an overreaction and so you could with confidence take your usdt that you had sitting there convert it all to usdc and get a 13 percent um profit when it repegged it was pretty much guaranteed regardless of how much money you chose to do it with so people made millions and millions of dollars on that DPEG simply by converting their USDT back to USDC. Right. But that's the nature of arbitrage. And, uh, you know, that was a great example because it only took, what, four or five days to repeg? I mean, it was pretty quick. And the secret there and what we're getting to the bottom line here is if you don't have that stable coin sitting there waiting for one of these box one events, then when it does present itself, you're not prepared. You can't take advantage of the opportunity. So trust me, I know it's hard to let that money just sit there. It's like, yeah, but it's not doing nothing. Actually, it is. It's waiting. It's like a sniper just waiting for that perfect opportunity. To wow. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And so you got to be these are the uh, strategic principles we're trying to teach you guys. You can't be emotional. You got to be logical, precise and ready. Yeah. And it's not listed simply because I didn't feel like making two lines for a stable coin, but half of it is held as USDT. The other half is held as USDC. Why? For DPEGs between the two. Ah, very wise. Talk about prepared. Yes. Well, if you so have I it all as USDC, how are you supposed to take advantage of a brief DPEG? You don't have any USDT to swap for it. Right. That makes sense. And so yeah, if you guys have all of your stable funds in one coin, you might want to rethink that thought thought process. So uh, and Jason, <laughs> exactly. And Jason asked a great question. Says, do you think we're missing any blue chips in the portfolio that we haven't uh, bought yet? Is there anything out there that uh, guys let us know in the chat? Are there any out there that you think we should be investing in? 
And uh, Cyril, what do you think, buddy? Well, there's a lot of difference between what you can consider blue chip, what you could consider, you know, chain native, what you could consider coin versus token. Um, I personally <laughs> think that our blue chip exposure is pretty good. It's mainly just BTC ETH. Uh, we have some exposure to Matic, you know, um, but as far as our stables are concerned, we keep it in the big two, right? Or not their stables. As far as our blue chips are <coughs> concerned, we keep it in the big two, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Why? Because any other quote unquote blue chip is either paired to Ethereum and you buy it with Ethereum, um, you know. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, a lot of that comes down to your definition of blue chip. Um, and everybody's a little bit different. Uh, you know, personally, I would consider blue chip a lot of the chain natives, uh, but they run into a lot of risk. Um, so it's like we've fought back and forth about Solana constantly. Um, and I know that Sarah will die on this uh, this hill. He, he won't give it up. And that's fine. Doesn't have to. That's a great thing. Uh, personally, yeah, I hold some of Solana. I also think that AVAX is a great one to hold on to because I think it has a lot of potential. Does that qualify as a blue chip? Technically, no or yes. It depends on your definition. So the biggest thing here is we're trying to give you guys the information to make your own assessments. You need to decide for yourself and you need to do your own research. What do the other blockchains have that Bitcoin and Ethereum are not solving? And so we've seen a lot of layer twos come out. Now, of course, that's all the rage now, but there's a lot of risk involved with those. You know, who's backing it? Who's supporting it? You know, uh, I know Base is one of the biggest because they're backed by Coinbase, but yet Coinbase now just got this huge lawsuit from the SEC. So how secure is it? Um, the biggest thing, do your own research and decide what's right for you. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of deciding what's right for you, what do I'm you guys home. decide is right for you <laughs> to add, uh, for us to add to our portfolio this week? I can tell you, but it's classified. I'd have to kill you. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. I'm already dead inside. Let's go. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, guys, I want to say thank you to everybody who jumped in and cast your vote. And as you guys know, that's what this is all about. If we don't have your votes, your opinions, we're not going to vote. Uh, our votes don't count. Even if we put them in, they don't count. Um, so make sure to jump. Bleh, words are hard, like you said. Make sure to jump in the Down Home Crypto Discord. Cast your vote. Voting polls open every Thursday morning and run until Wednesday night. And whatever you guys decide is what we vote on. We don't get to play a part in this. We trust in you and we trust in the education we're sharing with you. And even better is if you hear about new projects and some are popping up, I start to see some new DeFi projects starting to spin their wheels. So we're going to see a lot of this. Make sure if you add something onto either of these polls to jump over and discuss the vote channel, and share some links. Let us know about it. Let's learn and let's grow. Don't DeFi projects usually just spin their wheels anyways? Typically, yeah. But you know what? Okay. If you're smart enough and if you got the education, you can jump into a DeFi project, buy an early, and as soon as it launches, snipe it. When it goes up, sell it. Double your money real quick and easy. Make sure, Remember, guys, the money game is like pile of money in the circle and everybody's standing around with guns. They chose to play. They choose to play the money game. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you capitalizing on it. Now, mm -hmm. you, you can't go beat it up off somebody off the street. That's not okay. Nope. But man, you get in DeFi and, hey, they want to throw their money on the table. You are welcome to throw that black card, grab a handful, and head for the door. Have a nice day. Yep. It's like playing Kings. Yep. Exactly. Or whatever variation of that card game that people like. <laughs> Let's see. JC says, I think whatever chains finally make it, they will have very low gas. And, yeah, we're seeing a lot of... Uh, a lot of traffic, a lot of things going on, and a lot of uncertainty. Now, this could be great opportunity, so keep an eye out for the quiet builders, is my advice. Look for somebody who has been building through the entire bear market. It's kind of lying low. They're building up not a bunch of hype, but they've got solid foundation and technology. That's what you want to look for. That's, I think, is going to be the real winners. Agreed. Okay, so thank you all for voting this week, and the winners are... Dun -dun -dun -dun! Bitcoin again. Bitcoin again. Yes. For blue chip BTC. And you guys are solid. I like this. I think it's going up. Yeah, yeah, it has been. It has been. <laughs> I just want to hear myself. myself so. Oh, 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 I know why. Hold on. There you go. Now you can't hear yourself. Sorry. Thank you. 
You're welcome. I, uh, I forget when I show the screen. It, it's your system audio, and it, you hear me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, wow, 12 votes. The next runner-up was Ethereum with four votes. Uh, and... Matic with five. Oh, Matic with five and Ethereum yeah. with four. Nice. Okay. I had, uh, you know what I find comical down here? Uh, Solana had three. Hmm, they're sneaking up. They're sneaking up. <laughs> One of these days, Cyril's going to have to buy Solana, and I'm waiting for it. Because his face went... Oh, have you? Okay, well, that's fair. No, I don't. We have actually. Soul in our portfolio. We have um, 0.21. It's, it's, yeah. It's not a bad holding right now for the price of Soul. It's what? Just uh, right around $200? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Our, our, so we got like $39.20 $39 worth of Soul. Not bad. Not bad. So, uh, and this week in the DeFi, you guys shifted gears. Uh, I, I like that. It swapped way over into the high risk fund. So, kind of curious what do you think about that sorrow um well i mean we do have a very well balanced portfolio filled with mostly blue chips or index funds that hold mostly blue chips right uh so it makes sense that their risk appetite is starting to grow the markets are starting to heat up you know um so it makes sense gotcha and uh funny says i have yet to buy the high risk fund waiting for a dip Man, if you look at the chart, we just had a dip. <laughs> it's funny. He's waiting for a dip, yet I specifically waited until it already had dip to launch it so that it would mostly just go up when I initially launched it, and so it would be better optics. So, but anyway. <laughs> tomato, tomato. But, uh, guys, if you uh, haven't heard about the Cure Crew Funds or haven't learned about it, I just put out a video uh, two days ago giving a breakdown of the three different index funds. Um, and so if you haven't checked it out, make sure to go down below on the channel. You're going to find this one here, me making the goofy face, because, yeah, that's me with a goofy face. Because um, I'm trying to get the Cure Crew Fund out there to the people so they understand what it is, how it works, and why it's a much more powerful investment tool than just jumping into DeFi projects or meme coins or whatever. Because the great thing is, that man right there, he runs it. He's got his own money into it. So... For me personally, that's a huge feather in the cap. Absolutely. But, yeah, I'm gonna, and even Cyril doesn't know this. I am working on a secret giveaway. And I'll probably be announcing it here in about the next week or so. But I can tell you, it's, uh, it relies heavily on all three KKF uh, positions. So I'm going to tell you. Keep an eye out because I will be telling you about it in one of the live events. I'm going to sneak it under the radar. You have to be a dedicated Down Home Crypto member to really understand and to win this giveaway. So, Curious. Interesting. Yes, it I look will be. forward to hearing more about it. <laughs> you will. And then it's going to get fun. It's going to get crazy. But uh, also, I had one comment uh, came through Discord the other day. Uh, I think it was Funny Toro uh, or Rooster. I, I, I think it's Funny Toro asking me, how do you become a family member or a VIP family member? Well, it's not super big advertised because I'm really about the education, the passion. But down below here, you see a little button says join, a little tiny heart. I mean, that's it. It's not big flashy. If you click, that gives you the option to become a family member or a VIP family member. Now, both support the Down Home Crypto channel. That's what we do our giveaways with. But that's also where I put kind of special secret information and also the VIP family member, they get a backstage pass to every single Freaky Friday. That's right. They get an invite to jump up on stage every Friday night. And you could ask some of our VIP family members like Hope Giver or Crow. That's how they get in because I put it in there for anybody. The stage is open. So mm -hmm. if it is something you want to uh, get a little bit deeper involved into or know more about, make sure to click that link and help support the channel and find out that early alpha because that's where you're going to get it from me. Awesome. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us this Thursday. Um, hopefully you enjoyed learning about concentrated liquidity VE three three dexes. Uh, that that funnel mouthful. Um, they they really need to come up with, I guess, an acronym to that's shorter than their giant acronym, acronym of acronyms. Uh, <laughs> the very I, fine liquidity. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like V three C L. Right, like the, there you go. Simple. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you want to know more, 
uh, about these more advanced topics or there's something you're curious about, go ask it in the Discord. We're going to pick one each week to talk about, and we're going to expand our learning, expand our knowledge, and take things a little step further. And hey, Danfo, make sure you send Serenity to DM because I think you won uh, the dance off. Uh, well but, done, sir. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow for Freaky Friday. Exactly. And thank you all for tuning in. And I'd go through the list of names so you know who you were. And anybody watching on the rerun, you know, jump in the Discord, ask your questions. We will bring that information here to the table because we want to make sure you guys are educated. And as always, the only thing I ever ask is do me a favor. Hit the like and subscribe. Keep checking back and just be part of the fun. So thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern for Freaky Friday. See you. Bye, guys.